Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. Did you know Exeter once had a thriving printing industry? Obviously, or I wouldn't be talking about it, right? The first printing press used in Exeter was this one. It's an English common press, and it was used by Robert Loost Fowle to publish New Hampshire Gazette or Exeter Morning Chronicle, which is a pretty long name for a paper. He was the nephew of Daniel Fowle, a printer from Portsmouth who was frequently chastised for his radical publications. Daniel was on the American side and favored independence. Robert, not so much, but he kept his politics to himself, at least while in print. When the Declaration of Independence made its way to Exeter on July 16, 1776, Robert Fowle was printing it that same day on this press. He also took printing jobs for the state of New Hampshire. Exeter was the capital during the Revolution, you'll remember. He was later caught with the printing plates for counterfeiting money and was thrown in jail. He escaped, got caught, was locked up again, and escaped again. <laughs> Rewatch our minute about Exeter's great jail. Fowle made his way to the British line for the remainder of the war. He returned to this area after all the unpleasantness was over, but his printing career was pretty much over as well. The printing industry in Exeter, however, took off after the war. A series of newspapers were printed here. The biggest difficulty they had was the lack of paper, which is why a lot of these early newspapers look like they're printed on paper that seems like a Cub Scout project. Paper was made from linen and cotton, so you'll see advertisements in these papers practically begging people to bring in their rags. They actually manufactured paper in town for about 100 years. To get back to the printers, though, Henry Randlett opened a print shop in 1785, and later John J. Williams published in town. Exeter's printers were skillful enough to print music books, which was very specialized. Local leather tanners were able to provide the bindings for these books. The industry began to wane in the 1840s, and by that time, textile manufacturing had become the dominant industry. It's probably just as well. Apparently nobody could figure out what the social status of printers was. I mean, were they tradesmen or literary professionals? It was a hazy area. There's enough material here at the Exeter Historical Society to write an entire book, or at least a good term paper. Come in and visit our press sometime. This History Minute has been brought to you by PortsmouthNH.com. Our web address is www.exeterhistory.org.